Hello everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for the trading week ending Friday 13th of September. For the very short term when markets open next week, we may see just a little bit more downward, me downward movement. The target for support is about 2981. If that's wrong though, it could be a bit low. After that, I'm expecting the upward trend to resume and I'm expecting new all-time highs from the S&P as extremely likely in coming weeks. The next target is 3120 where I expect a big time-consuming consolidation may begin. Elliott Wave Analysis first, Classic Analysis last. And the Classic Analysis quite strongly supports this Elliott Wave count. I know conditions are getting stretched and extreme. The problem with looking at extreme conditions is it's not really very good at timing a trend change or the end of a bull market. I'm looking for more than one indicator, I'm looking for several to all align before I expect this bull market may be ready to end. And with upward movement particularly having very strong support from rising breadth and now strength in small caps as well for the last three weeks, it doesn't look like there's enough weakness here for this bull market to end. When I get to the AD line I'll go over that in a bit more detail. My Elliott Wave count sees the simplest of Elliott Wave structures, a five wave impulse, unfolding as a bull market which began in March 2009. This chart labels it at super cycle degree as a fifth wave to end a grand super cycle first wave. I also have another weekly chart where I move everything down one degree. That's just as valid and perhaps may actually be more likely. Cycle 1 is off to the left of the chart, it's the last weekly candlestick for November 2014. Cycle 2, a time consuming consolidation over here, subdividing is a double combination. Cycle 3, a simple impulse, that's the only structure this third wave may take. The strongest portion of it, primary 3, overshoots the upper edge of the Elliott channel, this is textbook perfect. Cycle 4, a double zigzag. I know cycle 2 and 4 are both labelled WXY, they're actually quite different structures. There are two general families of Elliott Wave corrective structures, there's your zigzag family which are sharper movements, pullbacks and strong bounces, and there's your sideways family which are consolidations, which are combinations, triangles and flat corrections. This is a combination, one of the sideways family, this is a double zigzag, a sharper movement. They're quite different structures, belong in the two different families. So there is really good alternation in structure here. There's also alternation in duration and there's alternation in depth of correction. If cycle 4 is over here, cycle 5 begins here and it has to subdivide as a 5 wave motive structure. I'm also charting a diagonal but I'll only publish that again if overlapping suggests we need to consider it. At this stage it looks most likely to be a simple impulse, the most common structure for a fifth wave. At primary degree 1, 2, we need to see 3 complete and then 4 and then 5. This labelling of cycle waves 1, 2, 3 and 4 looks quite likely to be correct because when we label it like this the channel fits so perfectly. When you look at the channel on this chart, it looks like I've drawn it from this low to this low and placed a copy on here. That's not actually what's happened. I've drawn it from the end of cycle 1 in the last candlestick for November 2014, from that high to this high, and then I've placed a parallel copy on this low, the end of cycle 2. And when you do that on a semi-log scale, it absolutely perfectly shows us where cycle 4 found support giving a really strong indication the channel is drawn correctly. If that's so, then the labels of 1, 2, 3 and 4 are correct. That has a really important implication. If 3 is over here and began here, it's shorter than 1. That means that for the core Elliott Wave rule, stating this third wave may not be the shortest waves of 1, 3 and 5, 5 is limited to no longer than equality in length with 3. This is my limit for the bull market for all of my wave counts that I'm publishing on a daily and weekly basis. I do have other wave counts where I've labelled this movement differently but because they just don't fit so well within the channel they look forced I'm only going to publish this one but if the limit is breached 
I do have alternates and I've published them under historic analysis on the monthly charts. Members should possibly, if you're new, take a look and check those out. Prior to this limit, the structure of cycle 5 has to complete. Let's take a look now at the daily chart where cycle or primary 1 and 2, primary 2 will be this low here, this flow here, primary 3 may only subdivide as an impulse and it has to move far enough above the end of 1 to allow room for primary 4 to unfold and remain above first wave price territory. Likewise for all of these third waves they have to move far enough above their counterpart first waves to allow room for the fourth wave to unfold and remain above first wave price territory. What that means is, because as you can see, the S&P hasn't made a new all-time high yet, and I'm expecting quite strongly that it will do so in coming weeks, most likely next week. What that means is, once it has moved far enough above the end of Intermediate 1, once it's made a new all-time high and moved further above that, subsequent big corrections, once we get to the end of Intermediate 3, this correction and this correction should be relatively shallow and should remain above this all-time high back here. So once we get up to the target about 3120, I'll expect, I will expect big consolidations, multi-week if not even multi-month consolidations for intermediate 4 and primary 4, but to remain above this all-time high, to not move back down below this point. The structure of intermediate 3 may only be an impulse at minor degree, 1 and 2 may be complete, minor 3 may be incomplete. We could have moved through the middle, strongest portion, but I might need to move the degree of labelling from the end of minute 2 all down 1 degree. It's also possible that only minuet 1 could be nearing completion. And so I'm leaving the invalidation point down here at the start of minuet wave, sorry, the start of minute 3, no second wave correction within it may move beyond its start, below the invalidation point. The target for intermediate 3 and for primary 3 is using the same Fibonacci ratio. I expect these third waves may only reach equality in length with their first waves because these targets fit with the higher limit for cycle wave 5. At the hourly chart level, here's the structure of minute 3. We could have 1, 2 and now 3 a complete impulse. 4 could continue sideways or a bit lower. If my expectation for this target at 2981 is wrong, it could be a bit low. There is strong support here about the round number 3000 pivot. And this so far looks like it could be testing support at prior resistance which was 3000. So this expectation could be a bit low. If price does break below that support though, I would look out for minuet 4 to reach about the 0.236 Fibonacci ratio of minuet 3 about 2981 before the resumption of an upward trend. Minuet 4 may not move into wave 1 price territory below the invalidation point. At the weekly chart level, as I quickly outlined on my first weekly chart, if we move the degree of the labelling of the entire bull market all down 1 degree, then instead of a grand super cycle big first wave coming to an end, we could only be looking at the first wave within the fifth wave of super cycle 5. In other words, when this structure here which I'm labelled primary 5, when that's a complete 5 wave structure, the following bear market may be relatively brief and relatively shallow for a second wave correction at cycle degree, which then may be followed by a third wave, the resumption of a huge bull market with increased strength upward. The structure of primary 5 is still the same, 1, 2, 1, 2, we need to see 3, 4, 3, 4, 5 complete and the limit is the same. Last weekly candlestick had a little bit of weakness in volume. This weekly candlestick does not. It's broken above, or it's remained above support, sorry, at 2940. The longer lower wick is bullish. Support from volume this week is quite strongly bullish. On balance volume remains constrained. 
If it breaks above resistance, then it would be an upward breakout, supporting bullishness in price. That hasn't happened yet. There is this longer term bearish divergence. This can develop even further, can develop even more strongly before we can see an end to the bull market. On its own, as you can see back here from these highs in price and here, these all time highs in price, it's not a particularly good timing tool. This bearish divergence can be quite strong and develop over many months or even years before we see an end to a strong bullish run. I would expect it to develop further as this aging bull market finally comes to an end, but it's not done yet. There's too much strength in upward movement to expect that this is over yet. ADX at this stage at the weekly chart level is below 15. It's too low to indicate a trend. The DX lines have been whipsawing. MACD is bearish but not fully so. At the daily chart level we have this triangle pattern. Price broke away from the upside of the triangle attended by a breakaway gap. The breakout had support from volume. A target calculated from the triangle pattern taking the width of the triangle and adding that to the breakout point is at 3060, so that's 60 points below my Elliott Wave target at 3120. Both of those targets though haven't been met, both of those targets expect more upward movement. Next resistance ahead at the prior all time high about 3028. Downward movement, Friday completed a little inside day, this looks like a small pause within an ongoing upward trend to check support now, which was previously resistance, at the round number pivot at 3000. This may be quite strong, and so I would expect if my expectation of a slightly deeper pullback is wrong, I may be expecting too much downward movement here. We may not get it. Downward movement within Friday's session did not have support from volume, pushing price lower. ADX is giving us the strongest signal it can give when it comes from low levels and rises up below both directional lines, it tells us that the market may be in the very early stages of a new trend. This is a very bullish signal from ADX. ATR is declining as price is rising. There's no concerns there because price can continue to rise for quite a distance and quite a long time in terms of duration while ATR declines. This is really normal behaviour for this market, especially currently. On balance volume, the last signal it gave here was bullish. It broke above resistance, which had a fair few tests and was reasonably long held, but did have some reasonable slope. So there was a reasonable, slightly weak bullish signal. It may be now testing support. What's more bullish sign from on balance volume is it's made a new high prior to price. That, in conjunction with the upward breakout, supports the Elliott Wave count. RSI is neutral at the daily chart level. There is still room for price to rise before it becomes overbought. MACD is full ball bullish. Stochastics is overbought. But when this market trends, this indicator can remain extreme for quite long periods of time. This one is hopeless as a timing tool. There's plenty of room for price to continue higher. And in fact, I expect it to do so again next week. At the weekly chart level, the AD line is making again new all-time highs three weeks in a row. It usually is a leading indicator where it leads, price usually follows. That worked well back here. I was expecting price to make new all-time highs and it did. Then we had a pullback and again new all-time highs after again bullish divergence between price and the AD line. I expect that's going to happen again. I'm expecting because price is so close now, I'm expecting new all-time highs is quite likely next week. At the daily chart level, Friday completes an inside day, the balance of volume was down, the candlestick was red, the AD line shows a slight increase. This is some bullish divergence. It's a bit weak, but it's stronger with VIX. Because VIX and the AD line for Friday are in agreement, I'll give a little bit of weight to VIX. But the AD line here, yeah, it's a little bit weak. We could be seeing a bit of a pullback before price continues on up, for the very, very short term that is. Here's VIX at the weekly chart level, and I'm pulling out to show 
longer term bearish divergence here as price is making these new all time highs, these last two big swings, inverted VIX has failed to make corresponding highs. This is a pattern of divergence that may continue to develop even further. This could be one of the earliest warnings of the approaching end of the bull market. But we also need to see bearishness from the AD line before I'm ready to call an end to it. And the AD line is too strong to expect an end to the bear market yet. No short term divergence this week between inverted VIX and price. At the daily chart level though, again, price has moved sideways but inverted VIX has moved quite strongly higher. And so for the short term there's some bullish divergence here. I just want to go back to the AD line weekly chart. All bear markets, with two sole exceptions from the Great Depression and onwards, have been preceded by a bear minimum of four months divergence between price and the AD line. The two exceptions were 1946 and 1976, where a bear market followed no divergence between price and the AD line, and those two bear markets were relatively shallow. There is a positive correlation between the length of divergence between price and breadth, and the severity of the following bear market. A longer divergence leads to a more severe bear market on average. A shorter divergence on average leads to a weaker or shallower bear market. And so at this point in time, the data tells us, and we can only go by historical data, that's all we've got. What it's telling us is what's most likely not certain, what's most likely is a bear market is less or unlikely to develop here and if it did develop here it would be most likely to be relatively brief and shallow. That's all from me with your S&P analysis this week. I hope all our members are having an awesome weekend.